Okay, so you're looking at the IBFX platform right now. Let's start off with what Fibonacci is. Now, I gotta tell you, it's a subjective tool, okay? So let's let's go ahead and I'm gonna blow up one of these charts. Let's go ahead and grab this uh this chart right here. Okay. This is simply just a four hour chart of the Aussie US dollar. I'll be happy to do analysis on any time frame. That's one of the great things about attending live. You get to be part of the process. If there's a particular time frame or pair you'd like me to do some Fibonacci analysis too, we'll do it together. So that way we can talk about some applicable current chart action. All right, so let me mention that I, this is the the Grab plugin. We don't really need this for today's talk, so you know it's really up to you. Uh, we've talked about market cycles in the past, so actually what I'll go ahead and do is use, you know use a plain Jane, black and yellow, IBFX chart. Okay, and when I say black and yellow, basically. If you look at the property of your chart, you, the color scheme you can choose, one of them is this yellow on black, okay, and that's, that's all that this is right now. Okay, so Fibonacci, let's discuss what it is and what it isn't. Everything in trading boils down to support and resistance, okay, and, and whether you believe that or, or not right now, okay, maybe some of you do, but maybe some of you don't, but the main thing is this. If you will agree that if you're taking a look at a moving average, what does the moving average represent? Support or resistance, right? What about an MACD traditional? The way the, the lines cross, the way prices, the way the histogram bars plot either above or below the zero line, that's support or resistance, isn't it? Overbought, oversold, that's support and resistance. So stochastic, same thing. Okay? So one of the main ideas behind really everything that we do in the markets is this idea that we're constantly looking for ways to either identify or confirm support and resistance. And for me, identifying support and resistance is usually done on the price side of the chart versus, for example, the indicator panel. Okay, if I'm using a MACD or a CCI or a stochastic or whatever it may be, that's usually, for me, a secondary tool used to confirm the support and resistance that I see on the price chart itself. Okay? So having said that, confirming price action, well, at some point I need to have a way to identify them. All right? Now, there's a lot of ways we identify support and resistance, right? And we've talked about in the past the idea of major and minor psychological levels, looking for levels like your double zeros, your 50 pips, the 20s, the 80s, those are your major and your minor psychological levels. Prices, in terms of tr most people, we, we think in round whole numbers, and to a certain degree, this, this is reflected in the way that we place our orders. We don't, you know, if we were having lunch or dinner, we wouldn't say, I'll meet you at 7.07 .07 p.m. I'll meet you at 7, 7.30, right? And, and that tends to be reflected in the way, from my experience, I've seen people tend to put in their orders based upon these whole round numbers. So those, in effect, become support and resistance on the chart due to the, due to the order entry, due to the way prices will stack up at certain price levels, okay? Same thing can be said for 52-week highs and lows. Okay? You know, why do, why do horizontal levels work? Because at a certain price, people tend to believe there will be support there again, or resistance at a certain level again. That's, that's how support and resistance works. If, if you were looking at a, a daily pivot, which I know is something that a lot of people like, and the calculations are very simple, they're much more objective, okay? In fact, they're automated on a lot of platforms, like what you can get here on the plug-in on the IBFX4. That, pl that particular plugin does what for you? It identifies support and resistance based upon a calculation from the prior days, high, low, and close, right? That's how you get that calculation. That's how you identify the support and resistance using pivots. What about chart patterns? Using trend lines and horizontal levels, 
the culmination of these, these lines and levels form shapes that we call patterns. And having said that, we use those lines and levels to determine if there'll be support or resistance. Right? That's basically the essence of that. Alright, so let's carry this one step further into Fibonacci. People either love or hate Fibonacci because it is very subjective. Most of us can agree upon different touch points on a chart. Okay, most of us can go back on another day and look at the high-low close and do the math. These levels are a little bit less subjective, although I will tell you from my experience, trend lines can be enormously subjective. If I give this chart to all, however many of us in this room, we'll probably have different levels that we'll focus on in terms of touch points from which we'll draw our lines and levels. So to me, trend lines are fairly subjective, but for some reason, they seem to get a pass. <laughs> we tend to forgive trend line subjectivity because we kind of understand it better. I think we've got more practice, and I think... Quite frankly, uh, there's probably more consistent and more agreed upon ways in which we draw trend lines. There's less confusion. What's interesting is if you take 10 traders who think they're great at Fibonacci, and I'm no different. I think I'm great at this. I think anybody who uses Fibonacci thinks they're pretty sharp at it, right? So if you take 10 traders with the egos that we bring to the game, right, and you tell them to draw Fibonacci, you're probably going to get five to eight different Fibonacci drawings because every one of those traders are not going to agree on what the last major move was. Now some of you might be familiar with this idea of a last major move or the most recent significant sell-off for rally. Well if if trend lines are, are, are identified by connecting the dots on these touch points, the, the troughs and the, the highs, the peaks and the troughs on a chart, and if pivots are used basically to find support and resistance based upon the prior day's high-low close, it can be said that Fibonacci is basically a way to find support and resistance based upon the last significant sell-off or rally. Now, that's pretty subjective, isn't it? You know, that's not, that's not the most objective thing in the world, is it? So, a lot of people will get frustrated with Fibonacci because there isn't a point A and a point B that really can be generally agreed upon or found very easily to be said, okay, those are two points from which I'm going to draw my Fibonacci. For those of you that say, yep, you're right, Rogi, and, and it becomes incredibly frustrating, I'm going to break down that process today, and hopefully what we'll do together is demystify this very misunderstood tool, and I'm hoping that you'll start to think about using this a little bit more often when you're trying to find key levels on a chart. Fibonacci is not really a trading tool. The reason I trust it the way I do is if any of you have Googled it, you know that it has nothing to do with trading. It has everything to do with the mathematical, really it's a mathematical equation of nature. I don't care if it's molecular biology, architecture, the way the, the bumps on a pineapple are formed, the spirals in a nautilus, uh, the way a tree expands. Basically, Fibonacci explains the way in which nature contracts and expands. And if you consider the markets, I don't care what market it is, Forex, stocks, futures, whatever, if you consider the markets an extension of human nature, it, it stands to say that Fibonacci can be used as a way to look at how we'll expand, how we'll contract, and that really means finding those price levels of supported resistance. 